Let's take a look at the evolution of English spelling and how it can affect students in general. In part one, we will review the origins of spelling. Well, English is different from most other European languages regarding spelling. English spelling is not consistent on how it represents sounds using the alphabet. To illustrate this, let's pronounce the following word. This letter combination can actually represent two sounds, read and read. The only way to identify the exact sound is to know in what context the words were used. I will read it tomorrow. I read it yesterday. As we will see, this is contrary to the basic principle of the alphabet. Most foreign language students are used to specific spelling rules in their languages that allow them to identify the sound of a word immediately. Let's see how uh, different uh, rules are applied in these uh, European languages. For example, in Spanish, the word esta and esta, you can see that the accent here is uh, indicated by the tilde in the a, where in this word there is no indication, so it's pronounced esta and esta. German, you have Worte and Werte, right? So that indicates that the O is pronounced different in this word. Italian, you have a sp uh, specified here più and stabilità. There is an indication by this symbol here. In Portuguese, for Portuguese, you have cansal. Now you see here the C and the A. When the C is before an A, is pronounced like ka. But here, the cedilla indicates that the C is pronounced like s. So, cansal. This, this symbol here tells me that this C is pronounced different than this C. Right? And then here you can see another symbol here indicating that this A is punctuated in a different way. So, it's voze. The alphabet was created based on a simple concept. Represent each sound with one symbol. Now, let's see how this evolved. First, we have the ideographic scripts. The first type of script used many different symbols to represent ideas. Now, in this system, a reader may need to learn thousands of different symbols in order to be able to read the script. Here we can see Egyptian hieroglyphs, and this is a Japanese script. Next, we have the syllabic script. Syllabic or logographic scripts represent the sounds of syllables. They represented a major step towards reducing the number of symbols needed to learn a language. A reader would need to learn only a few hundred symbols in order to read a script. So this provided an advantage for a student learning instead of uh, having to learn thousands of symbols he could now just learn a few hundred symbols in order to read script and then of course came the alphabet the alphabet introduced the idea of representing each sound with one symbol this allowed a reader to learn 
only a few symbols to be able to read any word in the language. We can see here a specimen of a proto-Sinaitic script, one of the earliest, if not the very first, phonemic scripts. This helped to standardize and simplify learning in the old world. The Phoenician alphabet was used extensively in the old world due to their trade connections. Now, it's interesting to see that the Phoenician alphabet represented the following vocalic sounds. They, represent, they represented the A, the E, the E, and the O. This is uh, very important because most of the old cultures, uh, including the Hebrews, um, the Phoenicians, the Greeks, and the Latins, represented these symbols, and then later it was uh, the U was added. So we have A, E, E, O, U. Now, looking at the Greek alphabet, we can see how someone that was learning to read Greek would learn, uh, basically they would go alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, etc. Right? And one, the, 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 the sound represented by the symbol was actually included in the, in the name of the letter, like alpha, right, and beta. And that, of course, gave the final name to uh, the alphabet. It comes from alpha and beta. Once the reader knows the sound represented by each symbol, then just combining the letters can produce any of the words of the language. Let's now take a look at the Latin alphabet, which is the one that is in use today uh, in English. The Latin alphabet represented a change in the way uh, the letters were represented, but also how the sounds that were associated. Right? They, they actually simplified it. And to learn the Latin alphabet, you would go A, B, C, D, A, F, G, etc. So this is a change in the way that the Greeks, the Greeks use the, the representation of, uh, or, or use the name of the uh, letter, while the Latins were actually just showing what sounds are being represented. Notice that I am saying A instead of A, which is the major shift that occurred in English at some point. Uh, a is a simple, powerful sound uh, represented by this symbol. And uh, A is actually a compound, a, um, a combination of sounds represented by that symbol uh, in English. By representing specific points again, it was easy for the uh, Latin script to represent sounds. Right? So if they wanted to represent the sound A, they would probably or would have used A and E, and then it would have sound A. We'll discuss later what happened in English and what um, made possible for this change to occur. The Latin alphabet represented two types of letters, vowels or vocals, A, E, I, O, U, and consonants, B, C, D, F, etc. Now, the word vowel comes from vocal, and it represents the voice, and uh, the Latins uh, understood that this is coming from the use of the vocal cords, so they named them vocals. 
while the consonants are sounds that are more like noises and need to be accompanied by a vowel in order to be able to identify the sound. For example, b, d. It's hard to identify what sound that comes from, but if I say b, d, it's easier to identify the sound and it also uh, provides louder volume. The vowels are the ones that pro provide volume to speech. Another fact that uh, gave origin to this name is that a syllable cannot be created only by one consonant. A, a consonant needs to be accompanied by a vowel or a syllable can be created using just one vowel. So for example, bad needs the consonant B, D and the vowel A. Talking a little more about vowels, they are produced by allowing the air to flow through the throat and mouth and the, the simultaneous use of the vocal cords. As already mentioned, they provide volume or loudness to words. The ancients also used to call vowels the souls of the words. Now, again, why five vowels? As already mentioned, ancient cultures represented only five vocalic sounds, a, e, e, o, and u. And as already discussed, these are very loud points of the mouth uh, where, where you can produce the loudest sounds. So by using these sounds, they ensured that the sound is going to be loud. Um, some, some uh, English people don't like uh, Italian or Spanish because they say it's a loud language, uh, but it is loud by design. Probably in the old world, it was considered weak or useless to have someone that can only could be heard from a few meters where uh, providing a loud speech would be more valuable. So the five vowels were represented by the Phoenicians, the Hebrews, the Greeks, the Romans, at least, and are maximum resonance points, creating the loudest sounds a human being can produce, with A ah being the loudest sound. Another interesting fact is that the A ah is the sound that is uh, uttered by an infant when it gets born, according to tradition, and that's why it was put as the first sound of the alphabet. It's the origin, while the O or the O is the last sound. So that was the, the, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, because it's actually the um, highest resonance point and, and, and the first point, the first sound that um, an infant would utter, while the O is uh, closer to a dying sound. So the Latin alphabet was a simple and powerful system. Learning a few symbols allowed scribes to represent any word by using the standardized sounds represented by the letters of the alphabet. In other words, the sounds were limited to the ones represented in the letters. A, a human being is capable of producing more sounds. But standardizing the sounds help to create a simple and powerful system. Now, for example, using this system, I do not speak Latin, but I feel pretty comfortable on reading these words. For example, Roma, caveat emptor, amor vincit omnia, pater noster. I'm just following the sounds that are represented by the letters. Uh, particularly the vowels and um, 
I, I am reading this and I am comfortable that I am uh, producing the correct letters. So even if I was able to go to old Rome and read, uh, I will be able to read what the letters, uh, and by read I mean pronounce what the letter sounds, the letter, the sounds of the letters are representing. In summary, the Latin alphabet was created based on the concept of using one symbol to represent one sound, following the tradition of the older uh, languages. It was a simple and powerful system. It allowed a great number of people to learn to read and write faster using little resources. It was a great communication system that allowed culture to expand. We will explore in the next uh, video how English evolved into uh, the current uh, spelling and how that affects our learning of English, uh, particularly for uh, foreign language speakers. You can buy Enigmas of the English la uh, Alphabet. Uh, the ebook is available in Amazon.com and I go over more detail uh, on all the subjects that uh, I discussed in this video and that we'll be discussing in the next few videos. Thanks everybody.